Hey guys, welcome to the losers match actually between Adame and Grasp in BSL Season 11. Chobo League Group A. There was a walkover for Agistel. So he is going to advance in the winner's match. And I'm not sure the reason for that between him and Art of Turtle, but that therefore Art of Turtle will go to the final match and will play the winner of this. So I went in the replay pack. It took me a little bit of time to sort it up, but I did find a text file that said, okay, very nice. The guys cheering each other on. Bottom right-hand corner, we have Adame as the blue Protoss. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Grast as the green Protoss. This is going to be... I think I saw that this is on Polypoid. Yeah, this is on this is on Polypoid. Anyway, PvP, Polypoid, four-player map. We'll see how it goes. If you... And all, I should mention that while I'm here. FYI, I do have a cast. I'm thinking of uploading another one. Actually, Rustig's game uh, for being a... Uh, Patreon only kind of cast. So if you're a patron, you get access to it early. I will probably release it to the general public in two weeks. I do have a Patreon account to support me. I've got seven supporters now, and I'm feeling really awesome about it. And just, I gotta say, I'm just gonna take a moment while all of this is setting up and the players are doing the initial builds. We're probably gonna see Gateway first from both of them. Gateway right there, Gateway right there, mirrored. It's really nice to be back commentating, you guys. It's just, I don't know. It's, uh, I didn't realize how much I missed this. What I did not miss was all the weird drama and everything that was involved in the StarCraft community and all the weirdness that was happening with StarCraft 2 and things like that. But it is, yeah, it's just really nice to be back in casting and it just fills some sort of mental gap uh, that I really needed. We do see, <laughs> we do see Grass once again opening up with the two gates. So he's gonna go for that early zealot pressure. We do, oh, two gates opposite corner as well for Adame. So this is gonna come down to straight up micromanagement skills. And actually, yeah, I'm curious Who's going to win this? I think I've seen Grass versus Future once, if my brain is filling that in. And I think Future ended up taking that matchup, but Future has amazing early game micro. But Grass was no slouch in in that engagement. So, and I, I'm not familiar with Adame, so it's very possible that these guys are evenly matched in a straight up micro fight. But a critical thing is who scouts who first? Probe scouts are just passing each other, and they're both. You got the counterclockwise. I think what's going to end up happening is Adame is going to end up getting inside. We'll see the, where the initial zealot heads. I gotta assume the initial zealots. Yeah. Okay. So Adame is going to find the blank spot first. So he's going to the bottom left-hand corner first. Zealots blocking the ramp. But what this is going to do is this is going to. This could go either way, actually, because the other, the opposite side of this in the mind games field is with zealots blocking this ramp. Adame isn't necessary as long as this zealot stays hidden. Adama isn't necessarily going to know what he's up against, and that goes both directions. It's kind of an interesting thing about the PvP matchup, is until you got the robotics facility out, you really have to rely on just kind of instinct. But no! Okay, first Zealot sneaks out, he sees all three Zealots, so he knows exactly what he's up against, and he's able to slide through! Almost with the probe as well, the probe dies on the line, but that's one Zealot going to come in. He is in fact going to see that he's up against two gate, but critically, opposite corner, that is a cybernetics score, so it's going to be a mix of Zealots and Dragoons in the mid game, able to get one probe, continuing to try to do some harassment and actually, oh yeah, pro, a Zealot dies and that is an additional Zealot that would have needed to be on the defense. Critical thing for Idame, if he can get a Zealot out and defend this, he will win the game. Grasp is going up with just Zealots against Dragoons and as soon as you honestly have two Dragoons and any sort of Zealots in front of that, really not, I guess, not pure count. If you had like a million Zealots, eventually those Zealots would break through, obviously. But point being, once you have like a, a Dragoon or two out on the ground to deal with your opponent and kind of their Zealot flood, you end up winning the match overall. And you can see how much, if you can just do the mental count, 100 per, this is this is basically a Nexus worth of minerals and these follow-up Zealots is just alone. And those are Zealots that can't get up the ramp and provide additional assistance. Critically, these probes provide additional bit of a buffer because they can actually fire through the Zealots. But it is possible that we're just going to see, it's going to come down to micromanagement. If you can get really nice micromanagement in and out, you can sometimes end up taking these matches. So they're the probes engaging right there. The Dragoons are going to be able to come out momentarily. This is not looking good for Grass. Grass already lost one Zealot, second Zealot down. Is he going to be even able to punch through? There's the Dragoons coming on the front line. So one Zealot, one probe down. He's going to have to reshuffle a little bit. And that is going to be three Zealots versus two, two Zealots and two Dragoons. Yeah, Grasp is in a spot of trouble now. Because uh, honestly, Adame has the option to play both defensively and offensively following this up. Uh, yeah, and already working his way. And I think, yeah, Grass wants to try to save that Zealot. But that Zealot already very low on health. There's only a single Zealot blocking that ramp otherwise. So it is... 
and grass producing true dragoons, so he's not going to get overrun. He's going to go ahead and try to plot. He looks like he was saving up for his own nexus. Um, opting not to plop it down. He was saving for it, though. You did see the 400 minerals. But this is four dragoons making their way towards the front door. This is going to be a superior dragoon count overall. Third gateway being plopped down for Adame, so feeling it. Plus, he's going to have, I believe, that weapons range upgrade advantage comparatively. So he's going to have a superior army, superior tech. The one advantage that Grast is going to have is the high ground miss shot chance, uh, misfire chance. And if he can get the shield battery up and just hope that Adame overcommits, that could be all the difference. So game's not completely over, but things are very, very, very much looking in Adame's favor here. One Dragoon down. This kind of comes down to luck and micromanagement. Honestly, if I was Adame right here, I would not be pushing this. He's lost two Dragoons. Honestly, so many misfires. Did force the shield battery, so that's four Dragoons and a shield battery on the front. So he's still got the overall economic advantage. I say take the win, go ahead and take that high ground. Either get some additional tech to follow, or go ahead and take your own uh, command center. Instead, Grasp moving down with a superior Dragoon count, and it looked like Adame moved off the high ground and ended up losing a Dragoon. So uh, swinging ahead a little bit in the overall Dragoon count. But if you look at supply, just straight supply, Adame is in the overall lead. Critically, though, I think it's going to come down to whoever plants that Nexus first. And I think Grasp, moving into the mid-game, might be able to swing that. Because, yeah, he's saving the minerals to do so. Yeah, dropping that Nexus. He still has that shield battery where he can just move back and forth, get those shields regenerated. And this was a lot of Dragoons that were honestly built to do, I assume, some sort of frontal assault. And just a complete lack of... So, I yeah, I think Adame was thinking there was going to be a follow-up attack to this. Or something along those lines, because he's playing very defensively. So he's going to end up actually, despite the early game advantage, maybe falling behind in the mid game. We'll see. It's going to come down to this engagement right here, because he is going to have a. Oh, that one Dragoon moving off. Probe is going to spot that. It's going to come down to this engagement and how well the shield battery juggling happens. Also, if Grass is forced to cancel that Nexus or not. He's just going to die. Okay, he needs to reorganize. Yeah, and get the good concavity. Dark Templar out in the field. I missed that in the meantime. So somehow Grass is able to sneak some minerals and get two Dark Templar. They're sneaking their way across. Is there a cannon back here? That's four gateways. No cannon. Now the cannon. Okay, I think he saw uh, the quiver or the shiver, the shimmer. That's the word I'm looking for. He saw the shimmer there. The Dragoon's moving onto the probe line, so they're going to get a lot of probe kills. Two additional gateways being plopped down. Dragoons are going to be suffering a bit of Dark Templar damage. Dark Templar sitting, and so this is a nice a nice job from Adame. It's actually going to plant Dragoons to try to do that shuffle. Looks like the Dragoons have been wiped out, though, on the opposite corner. Grasp down to 21 supply, though, has just been obliterated as far as probes go. Dark Templar has gotten into the main, but because the Dark Templar's there, there's no cannon. Adame has to call GG. Wow! Oh, wow. Um, just these matches have actually been excellent, I gotta say. What a swing! Yeah, that's. I pulled that from chat. Yes! Wow! Unbelievable. Single Dark Templar there. They Yeah, with the Dark Templar in the main, he wouldn't have been able to get the cannon up, and the probes would have just gotten obliterated. So that that's it. Two DTs. This is PvP for you. One of those matches. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it. We will move on to game two in the losers match.